eyes on the prize. We've been hit with the coronavirus. Now we have uh, riots erupting around the uh, the world in regards to, and it's not even because of the young man, uh, the Floyd uh, man who lost his life, it's in regards to some people just want to be ignorant and opportunists at this hour. And remember, we just have to pray for them as well, that God convict their hearts and that they stay focused. Amen. And I do believe that something needs to be done and it shall be done and it will be done according to his word. But we have to do what uh, we need to do in this hour. Let's continue praying and trusting and believing God. And also, if you, you know, believe in uh, peaceful protest, as I do, but it doesn't result to violence. Amen. Amen. Things must be done in decency and in order. Amen. And as I stated before, let's keep uh, everyone lifted up in prayer. You know, Bishop is in law enforcement and then we have the Myers that are in uh, part of the military and National Guard. So let's keep them lifted up in prayer as well. Amen. So no man knows the day nor the hour or may, what may transpire out of this, but we know the God that we serve are going to keep us. Amen. Protected. Amen. So again, I'm going to talk about Pentecost on today. I'll come to lift your spirits and let you know that we're going to rejoice, not just today, but every day. And to explain, as he's already stated, what Pentecost is, and I'm going to give you a few notes that we're going to go into scripture on this. Uh, it says Pentecost uh, this year is celebrated on May the 31st. And this is also the celebration of my brother's birthday, as well as my uncle. So we have a lot to celebrate on today. Um, Pentecost is the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and other followers of the Jewish, uh, I'm sorry, of Jesus Christ, while they were in Jerusalem celebrating the festival. Pentecost comes from a Jewish harvest festival called Shabbat. The apostles were celebrating this festival when the Holy Spirit descended on them. And people passed and they actually thought they were just drunk, but they were actually drunken in the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Ghost had, uh, they had received the Holy Ghost and had fell down upon them, amen? So I want you real quick to turn with me and I'm going to read, we're going to teach on today. I'm going to read uh, starting at Acts, the second chapter. So if you have your Bibles or your uh, phones or computer, go with me to Acts because we're going to read today. So you can get an understanding on what exactly Pentecost is. And then I'm also going to touch on uh, speaking in tongues because I know um, we can hear things from others, but I'm going to show it to you in the word on today. Amen. All right. So good to see everyone once again on the line. So good to see our visitors on the line as well as family. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start at Acts, the second chapter, and I'm going to begin reading to you at the first verse. Amen. And it says, again, it's Acts 2. We're starting at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as, like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm. And there were dwelling at and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this uh, this was noise mm. abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galatians? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parathines and beds and Elamites and the dwellers in the midst Mesopotamia and the Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Philia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and the proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue in, in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. The 12th uh, verse reads, 
And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaning this? Others mocking, others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Again, like I told you before, they were thinking that they were actually drunk when they were speaking in tongues. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Meaning it was early, so what he was telling them, that it was the third hour of the day, so they're not drunk. But this, that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my, and on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. 19 says, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God have raised up have loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it for David speaketh concerning him I foresaw the Lord allow always before my face for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with the countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the portrait David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sufferer suffer is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus have God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalt, exalted, and having received of the Father the promises of the Holy Ghost, he have shed forth this, which ye know, now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Amen. Therefore, let us all, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall come, shall call. Amen. So what this is basically, and what I've shared with you, and please write this, uh, write this down, Acts the second chapter, amen, and I stopped at 39, but you can go on and go forth, amen, and it speaks about and talks about uh, the testifying and more goes into more speaking in tongues, but what is what I'm basically sharing with you on today of Pentecost, let this be your new beginning. Uh, know that we're celebrating in spite of what's going on in the world on today. We can't be deceived, amen. We can't be distracted by the world. We know we serve a true and living and awesome God who's not, his, who's, his word is not void. He's not a man that he should lie. God is not going to lie. He's never lied to us. We may get in our own self way, you know, and deter some things, but God is not a man that he should lie. And today we should celebrate not just today on this uh, Pentecost Sunday, but every day we should celebrate giving, giving him thanks, amen, for what he's done for us, for the chance and his grace and his mercy that he's bestowed upon us and for life, amen. And just for, you know, uh, people are coming against and when uh, Sister Mimi was saying about shutting off things, I had told my kids the other night to turn the TV off um, because of the news and then my, our eight-year-old had some questions. Um, and it was a distraction, and, and I applaud her for saying and sending out a text, for, uh, which was the right thing to do for people to go in prayer, and anytime you find yourself, you know, getting disturbed or getting trouble, that's the best thing, and, and the, the only thing to do is to seek counsel from God, amen, to go into prayer, because you look at the news, you go to social media, it gets you off track, it gets you uh, deterred, it gets you wondering, and then you got people denouncing God and going against God, and they're not praying, and they're not going to be like the ancestors back in the day. Um, they want to fight, and what is that going to result in? Nothing but death. Amen. When God truly told you he's in control, he's in charge, but we have to take charge as the saints of God to start, continue to witness. If they don't want to hear it, fine. If they want to hear it, awesome. Amen, but we have to do what God has called us to do, and not just on this Pentecost Sunday, as I said, but every day, every Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. If it's just calling, let them know, hey, Jesus loves you and I do too. Just a smile alone is witnessing to someone and let them know, you know, because you have so many people with crowns on their faces right now. So many people that are scared to, you know, leave their house, not just because of the coronavirus. And I think over the weekend, they forgot all about that. Uh, when they were out protesting, there were people out there uh, all close together, no masks, not using wisdom, you know, not realizing what you're doing. You're actually, you're saying you don't want to fall into the hands and you're tired of things that are going on, but yet you're still going out there and, and putting yourself in danger because with the virus and everything that's going on. So think about that. You'd be stuck in the hospital. And I said, this is how these numbers are going to rise. When I was in prayer and I was seeing it, these numbers are going to rise because these people are not using wisdom. They're out there amongst these people spreading this virus. So now those numbers are going up and what you're doing, you're giving the enemy what he wants. Amen. So one way or the other, if you're not using common sense and you're not using wisdom, you're still falling into the trap, into the hands of the enemy. So if you're getting you out, if you're out there peaceful protesting, you're going to use common sense and wisdom. You're going to space yourself out. You're going to wear your mask and you're going to go out and protest. But when it's out of ignorance, Amen. And opportunists, you're going to go out there not using wisdom and going to cause yourself to be sick. So if the police don't get you, shoot you or kill you, amen, you're going to kill yourself. Basically what it's boiled down to. And that's what they were trying to get into the hearts and the minds of people um, on yesterday. So as I was seeing, um, I'm not on social media, um, but even in the news, I was seeing some things and some of the comments that people were making. And I said, Lord, have mercy on them. Help them. You know, um, it is time out for some of this stuff, but God is in control. He's going to handle it all, but we have to do our part. And as the scripture says, and as we've repeated over and over, you know, we have to humble ourselves and this world has to turn from his wicked ways. And then when we hear from heaven and he will heal the land. Amen. 
So in spite of what it looks like, I want you celebrating. I want smiles on your faces. Amen. If somebody want to cook dinner and invite me over, I will come over. But we, uh, for this Pentecost Sunday, amen, let's go out rejoicing on today and thanking God for his Holy Spirit, thanking God for the Holy Ghost, amen, thanking him for who he is, thanking him for his resurrection powers, his saving powers, and everything that he's doing for us, amen. When the enemy think he's doing something to us, just know that God is doing something for us, amen, and keep your minds, your hearts stayed upon him, no matter what it looks like, amen, uh, again, continue to practice um, your social distancing uh, right now, until God takes this thing off of us, amen, out of this land, because it's his doing, amen. And uh, just keep using wisdom. And like I said, keep praying for what's going on in the world on today, amen. All this stuff has to be revealed and it has to come forth because it is in his word. But we're praying that God is gonna convict these people, these uh, people that are, are of higher authority, that are thinking they're getting away with things, they're not, they're not. But it's how we react, what are we gonna do? How are we going to go about these uh, situations? Yeah, it hurts. It makes us upset. But we got to know we are the child of the living king, and we have to represent him well and just continue to pray for those people that their lives be uh, changed and that God saves their souls. Amen. And I know it's hard. It's, it's, it's rough. It gets, you know, and first natural. It upset me when I saw this, when I saw the videos. But we have to, too. Uh, educate our children and let them know um, what's going on. There's no young age. They're, they're not too young to know what's going on, but enlighten them so they will know the precautions they have to make. Um, we, with the autistic son that we have, uh, he's 16. He's huge. He'll take off running in a minute. And, you know, I don't want anybody hurting my, my child, hurting my son. So I have to be more precautious in that area as well. And just to, uh, watch him more closely and just ask God to cover him and protect him. We have to do our part. We know God is in control and he's in charge, but we have to do be about our father's business on this land. When we see people distorted and upset in the grocery stores and everybody want to kill everybody right now and doing what the enemy wants us to do, separation, and that's not what God wants because if you cut me and you cut the white man, you cut the Indian over there and you cut the uh, Asian, we all bleed red blood. We all are uh, children of the king. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So don't give, don't, don't fall into it, you know, with the hate, um, because that's what he, they want. And pray for your pr pray for the, our president. Amen. Pray for him that God save him and that God heal him and God remove him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I just thank God for all of you. I hope you've gotten something out of this on today, on this Pentecost Sunday, which is May 31st. Amen. The last day of the month of May. And as Bishop stated, um, I will be celebrating from June the 1st to June to 23rd, which is my birthday. Amen. So I thank God for all of you and everything that transpired. I hope you got something out of the lesson on today. Amen. Turning it back over to our very own Bishop.